There is very little peace for a man with a body buried in his backyard. Jason Getty had grown accustomed to the strangling night terrors, the randomly prickling palms, the bright aching surges of adrenaline at the sight of Mrs. Truesdale's dog trotting across the lawn with some unidentifiable thing clamped in its jaws. It had been 17 months since he'd sweated over the narrow trench he'd carved at the back border of his property, since he'd rolled the body out of the real world and into his dreams. Strangely, though, it wasn't recalling the muffled crunch of bone that plagued him, nor the memory of the cleaning afterward, hours of it, all the while marveling that his heart could pound that hard for that long. No. It was that first shovel full of dark dirt spraying across the white sheet at the bottom of the grave that came to him every time he closed his eyes to sleep. Was it deep enough? He didn't know. He wasn't a grave digger. Then again in his mind he wasn't a murderer either, but facts are facts. Calvin and his crew had arrived shortly after eight, expecting to be done by lunchtime. The front yard was now trim and tidy, and the flower bed's machined edges were well beyond what Jason could have managed on his own with the shovel, even if he had been able to bring himself to touch it. He'd felt better just watching them unload the trays of flowers. The glow of the colors was contagious, and the sprays of healthy green radiated ripeness. Respectability had to be a well-kept garden, and Jason's mood went warm at the sight of it. The workers had been at it for nearly two hours, and Jason expected a blushing request for restroom privileges. What he got instead at the front door was an eyeful of an ashen-faced Calvin. Mr. Getty? It was all Calvin could manage. Yes? Jason's mouth answered on autopilot while a roar rose up in his ears, a nearly mechanical hum as his mind calculated what in his yard could make a suntan gardener turn white and trembling. Mr. Getty, we found something. We think you better come have a look. All right, just let me get some shoes. Jason stumbled as he turned, sloshing more coffee out of the cup and onto his pants and the floor. But what did it matter? The game was up. Thank God I can't do this. No, you can play dumb. You can run. Why did they go back there? Why were you stupid enough to hire a landscaping crew? You worthless, spineless. Must think, what the hell am I going to say? Somewhere on the way from the closet to the front door, Jason's mind went blank. He stopped berating himself and gave up casting around for canned answers to the inevitable questions awaiting him in the backyard. He simply walked out the door, pulling it shut behind him. Calvin stood, twisting his red ball cap in his calloused hands. Jason nodded to him and followed him off the front stoop, numbed straight through to the soles of his feet. The four of them gathered in a cluster, standing closer than men who didn't know each other normally would staring down into the rich black brown of newly turned soil. Jason had a number of abandoned ambitions and had once dreamed of being a doctor. He had pored over medical encyclopedias, memorizing words that carried mystery and clout on their convoluted syllables. Frontal, parietal, sphenoid, zygomatic. They flooded his mind as he looked at the ground and labeled what he saw, what the other men saw as forehead, crown, temple, and cheek. The skull's eye sockets were filled with peat, but there was no mistaking the contours and ridges. A human being, or part of one at least, had been unearthed on Jason Getty's property. Four men stood, three in horror and revulsion, and one in complete bewilderment. Jason had followed Calvin down the front steps like a man on his way to the gallows. Part of his mind noted with a pang of regret as they passed that the living room windows needed washing. He had turned around the corner of the west wall, past the window with its closed blinds, his eyes glued to the label jutting up from the collar of Calvin's blue work shirt, itching to reach out, to tuck it in and make things right. His musings led him to run up Calvin's heels, not having noticed that he'd stopped, not having expected him to stop nearly so soon. They hadn't even cleared the back of the house. The foreman and his crew had uncovered a body, but not the body Jason had interred all those months ago at the back of edge of the yard. That body remained tucked into the shade of the trees and was as far away as it could be and still have Jason Getty paying the taxes on its gritty resting place. This skull turned a baleful eye from the mulch bed at the side of the house, directly under Jason's bedroom window, and he had no idea who it was.